it's over. It's totally over. Uh, Joe Biden didn't pick up a single voter there. He lost millions of votes uh, there. He looked ancient. He sounded ancient. Nobody was even listening to what he was saying, even when he was in the middle of losing his train of thought. And you're like, no. But even then, don't worry about it because nobody heard him. He uh, spoke at a whisper. He mumbled so much. He looked incredibly weak. Now, is he actually weak? No, he's old. There's nothing he can do about it. He's 81, and he looks honestly 101. And so, all of this time, and I look, I want to give the most credit to the Young Turks audience because before I made my desperate run against him in the primaries, I did a poll. I said, I'm not going to run if you guys don't want it, and you're going to force me to do it if you think that Biden can't win this thing. And they voted overwhelmingly, somebody's got to do it, so just run. We need something different, that you guys were right, you were 100% right. Yep. And now, everyone is screaming from the rooftops, you were right, Joe Biden is not up to the job. It's the most obvious thing in the world. Now, the reality is that Donald Trump had a terrible debate. He said lunatic things nonstop. He said the line, in my administration, we had H2O. And did not follow it up with anything else. It was okay. true, at least. Yeah, this, this is like if you're debating a guy who is saying maniacal things like you're the Manchurian candidate and um, uh, that other countries are releasing all of their criminals and mental institutions to uh, come running across our border. You have an obligation to kick his ass in that debate. Yep. So when he says uh, about Biden, he's like a Palestinian. What now, Joe Biden? You've lost thirty points with young voters because how how brutal you have allowed Israel to be to the Palestinians while still giving them all that money. This is your opportunity to pick up some of those votes to bring him back and go. Did you just say I'm like a Palestinian as if it's an insult? Yep. So then you can go on and I know you love Israel and you'll say some ass kissing thing about Israel, but by God, at least pick up some votes. Right, and he he just used Palestinian as an insult. It's, I know, look, I know Americans unfortunately in general don't care about Muslims, Palestinians, etc. But at least the Muslim, but young voters do. At least the young voters pick them up. He's giving them to you, and he can't. He didn't do that. He didn't do anything else. Trump says one maniacal thing after another. Biden comes back. I be I could beat you in golf. The split screen killed him, John. They're looking, they're showing both of them. And while Trump is talking, Biden's got his mouth open. It's look here, I'm here. On behalf of the Democratic Party, I throw it in. Biden's done. If you go with this guy, guaranteed loss. And by the way, the Democrat, everyone in Democratic leadership, if they stick with Joe Biden, should be fired after the election. You know why they're doing this? You know why they put up this feeble old man, this elder abuse that they're doing right now? Because understand something that's so important in politics and nobody ever tells you. Joe Biden's already president. He retires, he retires as President Biden for the rest of his life, okay? But everyone around him, if there's a different candidate, they all lose their power. They're not going to be able to work for Governor Gavin Newsom or Governor Josh Shapiro or anyone else. They are tied to Joe Biden, people at the White House, people on his campaign team, people at the DNC. You think they don't see him in the White House every day? You don't think that they see him going, Ugh. this was at his best. They pumped him up, pumped him up to get him to his best. Imagine him at his worst. They all know that, but they cared more about their own jobs than they cared about the American people. They said, and they're still saying this is the most important election of our lifetimes. Democracy's on the line, and you're gonna run that guy, Joe Biden, who can't speak? Nah, you don't believe that. And they're, yeah, no, we're gonna get a new candidate. There's gonna be a, a literal, like, not a physical and a violent one, but a literal political revolution in the Democratic Party right now. Right now, this is insanity. We cannot gift wrap this election for Donald Trump. And that is exactly what everyone in Democratic leadership is doing right now. There isn't a sane person alive that watched that debate and thought that Joe Biden should be our candidate. Yeah. And we're gonna be at the DNC, by the way, so stay tuned. We're gonna hopefully be covering it. Um, I've never watched a debate and more wanted to be immediately tagged into it. Um, I, I have said many times and I will say, how could Jake Tapper and Dana Bash possibly let some of those insane lies, repeated lies go by without fact checking? He passed Veterans Choice. 
But that was passed under Obama. He's been telling that lie for literally years. They know it's a lie, but they've clearly been ordered to not do any fact checking. But that said, while I will criticize them, they're not gonna fact check him. So it's on Biden and he didn't take any of those opportunities. You identified a few. We could go through almost any of the times that Trump spoke. There was an amazing opportunity for you to score some points to make Trump look insane. and He didn't take literally any of them. But honestly, like I can't even be that mad at him. My dog has had accidents at various points throughout his life. And now he's at the point where he has no control over his bladder whatsoever. And he wears diapers all day long because he's 15 years old. We don't get mad at him. How could we expect him to be able to control himself? How could you expect Joe Biden to do any better than he did? He's older than my dog in dog years. And and that's again, as you said, that was the best case scenario. And the reason that we're immediately talking about replacing him, it isn't fundamentally about the debate, especially because I can't conceive of there being a second one. It's because this is who Joe Biden is and it is fully representative of his ability to beat Trump in every other avenue of the election. His convention speech is gonna be nothing. He's not gonna be able to go out and meet people. He's not gonna be able to do rallies. If they do another debate, it'll be another disaster. He doesn't have the strength to prosecute this campaign, to boost his own record, to attack Trump in the million ways that are justified and necessary. This is who Joe Biden actually was and it is not enough because I agree with Joe Biden that this is the most important election of our life. I think the future of our government does rest on what happens in November. And I have no faith whatsoever in Joe Biden to be able to defeat Donald Trump. So uh, the Democrats knew this all the way back in February because he wouldn't do the Super Bowl interview. That is tens of millions, uh, I mean, at a minimum of free publicity. And it's the biggest softball interview in American politics. And he wouldn't do that. Couldn't. And, and that's when smart people who follow this stuff, Ezra Klein, Nate Silver, uh, progressives, all said, there's something wrong here. By the way, I'll give credit to people I don't normally give to, James Carville, David Axelrod. They're like, if you can't do a Super Bowl interview, you can't run for president. They knew that back in January and February. Our audience knew it back in October, September. There was no question about it. But they tried to, oh, we got this. We, you know what? We just get Morning Joe to tell everybody he's a dynamo behind the scenes, and we just get everybody in media, and we'll tell the progressives, shut up, and you have to do cheerleading for Joe Biden, and just rah, rah, rah. And everybody in mainstream media, pretend he's healthy, pretend, pretend that the emperor has clothes on. And we got yelled at thousands of times because we said, look, guys, we, it's not just us, the American people have eyes and ears. They see that the emperor has no clothes. You keep pretending it. Well, at this point, now after this debate, everyone can see. He has no clothes. He has no mind. It's over. So, guys, here, more. Uh, number one, he lost his train of thought two different times in just terrible ways. And there's one way of losing your train of thought. Hey, I was going to say something. Damn it, I forgot it. All right, I'll come back to it, right? That's how you mm -hmm. lose a train of thought. We and do that. And it's normal, normal. It's, and, uh, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. He ended one question by saying, by the way, and that was then. By the way, and the end. Yeah. So this is epic disaster. He looked like Fire Marshal Bill, that old Jim Carrey character. So I mean, this I'd is, take him as the nominee. Well, at least he could speak. And so when Trump says, to show you how easy it is, and Trump has said it so many times, you should be prepared for this. You know, these countries they're releasing their prisoners and they're clearing out all the mental institutions and having them cross the border. You come back and go. Okay, I think it's the lunatic, ravings of a lunatic mind to think that countries are taking their mental patients and their prisoners, bringing them to the border and then releasing them to the US. So, but I'd like to ask my opponent, which countries? Mm -hmm. And do you think they fly them in and then have them walk? Or do they bust them in and have them walk? How do countries that are not in Latin America or South America bring them in? Uh, so just ask him so that you humiliate him because it's such a stupid, ridiculous or, thing to say. Or judo it. Okay, I, look, I think it's insane to say that they're releasing their prisoners and they're insane asylum attendees or whatever. But if you believe that that's true, then how uniquely evil it was that Donald Trump saw us taking the
the opportunity to pass a bill to close down the border and he called up all the Republicans and told them, you cannot allow this to happen. The border has to remain in chaos because I need it to get elected. This lunatic thinks murderers and rapists are flooding across the border by the hundreds of thousands and he wants it to continue. He used his influence over the Republicans to make sure that it continued. Yeah, and three different questions Donald Trump did not answer over and over again. Climate change, what what are you gonna do about childcare and will you accept the results of the election, right? Yep. So as we talked about in the play by play coverage, Biden should come back from that and go two different times he had a chance to answer about childcare. He didn't answer it because he doesn't have a proposal and he doesn't care about your children. I pass a child tax credit, that makes a huge difference. It reduced child poverty. And you state the numbers, it reduced poverty overall in the country by X percentage. And you hit him with that and you go, I did something, I actually care about this issue. And if your party didn't keep blocking me, we could pass child tax credit, we could pass paid family leave. I'm ready to propose that right now, right? But we didn't get any of that, guys. Yeah. There was no answers to all of these crazy things Trump said, the things he didn't say and wouldn't address at all. And so when you come back from the Paris Accords, I mean about climate change and he won't answer it. He, Biden goes to Paris Accords and the other countries are doing it. Come look, That's, the only people left that are still saying Biden should be our candidate and he's perfectly fine are now officially blue MAGA. So just like red MAGA thinks, what do you mean? I don't care that Trump lost 60 cases in a row. I don't care that he doesn't have any evidence. He won the election last time. And now Blue MAGA is saying, I don't know what you're talking about. I watched that debate. I thought Biden was dynamic and I can't, I think he's gonna beat Donald Trump easily. That was a great debate. If you're saying that, and you're thinking that, sorry, brothers and sisters. Yeah. But you know, you 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 gotta go seek counseling because that you're detached from reality. So I'm gonna I'm ready. The next thing we're gonna do is start nominating people because this guy ain't it. This is a guaranteed loss. The Democratic Party, it would be the biggest act of political malpractice of our lifetimes if they stay with Joe Biden. It's mm. totally untenable and they don't have to. The answer is actually really simple. You have a convention just like we've always had all the way through 1972. You go and the delegates vote at the convention and then show me how good a politician you are. Go ahead and get those delegate votes at the convention. That's what we've always done. There's nothing wrong. Look, there's something wrong with that system in an ideal situation because you will want the voters to decide. But in a non-ideal situation, and and if you don't think we're in a non-ideal situation, again, you're detached from reality. You won't listen to anything. So go listen to some Democratic ass kisser tell you how great Joe Biden did because that's you're gone. You're gone. I'm not going to be able to talk you out of it, right? But for all of the other rational people in this country, for the rest of you. 90% of folks, we got to get busy picking the next candidate immediately. If if Biden is the nominee and Trump doesn't either choke on a filet of fish or literally go to federal prison, Biden Trump is going to win. They're going to replace Clarence Thomas. They're going to potentially replace Alito. They're going to potentially replace Sotomayor. You could have a 7 2. You could have an 8 1 Supreme Court. And they're going to put 41 year old Christian nationalists on the Supreme Court. And that is going to be the reality for literally decades going to the future. That is a guarantee. He got three the last time. We can, we can potentially replace some of the most regressive ideologically driven conservatives on the Supreme Court. We have that opportunity, but we do not have that opportunity if Joe Biden is the candidate. Yeah, look guys, if the Democrats don't replace him, the country will be forced to look at RFK Jr. And and I'm, I'm forced into that because this guy isn't gonna win. Biden is definitely not going to win. It's not even close. If you're, again, I because people are in their bubble so much, I need you to understand what other people outside of your bubble is are thinking. Or I ran in that crazy desperate primary campaign against Biden because every time I talked to non-political people, I would ask them, what do you think of Biden? What do you think of Trump, right? 100 out of 100 said he's too old about Biden. And they're like, he's weak, he's old, I don't, I'm worried about him. When a rando that doesn't follow politics says about your candidate, I'm worried about him. 
Not like worried for the country, like I'm worried for his health. You got the wrong candidate. Yeah, I, I, okay, I'm done with it. Because if you don't believe that he, if you think that that's the best candidate the Democrats have in this country, you're a full blown lunatic, sorry. And I don't care if you say, oh, Jake, you hurt my feelings. I'm not gonna watch Young Turks anymore. I just wanna show that he'll lie to me. Please lie to me and tell me that was a beautiful dynamic candidate and we got this thing locked up. No, he was already disastrously behind. He's losing every single swing state. And now after this debate, Good night, Irene. But they're they're not even they're not gonna go on TV and say Joe Biden killed it. They're just not gonna talk about Joe Biden. They're gonna do the other side of it, which we'll do, which is acknowledge the insane lies and the conspiratorial things that Trump said and his refusal to answer questions, and all of that is true. And they will pretend that Biden didn't need to appear there. He didn't need to convince anyone. And that's I think how they're going to try to get through the situation. No, it's gonna John. be pathetic. We do this after every debate, we show you, we tell you what reality is, and then we'll find the polls for you because you'll see right after a debate in every poll, once it comes out, who won and who lost, right? And that's the best poll because after that, the media tries to then change that number. The right wing media will tell you, oh, Trump won, Trump, Trump won. And the left wing media and, and mainstream media will tell you, Biden won, Biden won. And they'll try to move those numbers, right? I just double check right now as we're live on air, even CNN isn't saying it. CNN is saying disaster, panic. If you lost CNN, you've so lost everyone. New York Times, Biden struggles as Trump blusters. I think that's actually a better headline than Biden deserves. Um, HuffPost is uh, the debate from hell replace Biden talks happening. And I don't, I don't know yet if they're referring to just how every every Democrat on Twitter is saying it. Maybe they're talking about actual behind the scenes things. Now CNN is Biden and Trump trade barbs on multiple fronts, which is the sort of statement that is like technically true but utterly irrelevant to the situation. Yeah, I guess technically they did that. Who the hell cares? That's not what people are thinking coming out of this. And look, we, we talked about. Like he could have taken the opportunity to talk about his policies or whatever. He occasionally did that. He talked about some programs or something or some money. But every time he did that, it was so slow and so quiet. And nobody's gonna remember. What they're gonna remember is that Trump said a thousand times, we're not gonna have a country anymore. It'll be a third world country. Millions of people are flooding across the border. He's the worst president ever in American history. This simple, nonsensical, insane stuff. And then you have Joe Biden like desperately talking about Article 5 or something. Yeah, so guys, before we get into who the candidates should be, and we'll show you clips from as well. I'm gonna say one more thing about this. I think if they do not replace him, which would be the most, again, it's unthinkable not to replace him. It would be beyond political negligence and malpractice. It would be the craziest thing I've ever seen in politics. If they don't replace him, he's gonna finish third. Again, I don't care if your feelings are hurt. There's no way people are gonna vote for this guy. I don't, I no, don't, no, I here's, don't agree here's with that. No, no, here's why, here's why, John. Now look, if there was a sane person, I'm not saying that I would agree with this person, but like, like it's just a normal standard boring Mark Cuban. He would easily come in second and Biden would definitely come in third, okay? But we don't have that. We have RFK Jr. He's got huge problems with vaccines, Gaza, etc. But they're gonna have to listen to him now. They're gonna have to hear him out because this is not it. This is definitely not it. So when they hear out RFK Jr., yeah, they'll make fun of all my Okay, hold on. But well, then what they might find out is what we found out. His housing policy is excellent. He's he wants to cut half of defense spending. Yeah, mainstream media will go nuts, but that's a populist position that people will like. He's massively anti-corruption and totally wants to get money out of politics and has the right way to do it. He, in fact, he agrees with the Wolfpack strategy. Okay, so you think no way nobody's gonna listen to him. The mainstream media has already buried him, right? But he's going to get revived because this is this guy is not going to win the election. So people are going to be desperate looking for alternatives. The Democrats have to give them that alternative. If the Democrats do not give them that alternative, I'm telling you, Biden has a chance of finishing third. I look, I'll be looking at the polls over the next few weeks. I disagree with that. I just think that what could have potentially been like, you know, a 49 47 election will be a 52 43 election. And the Republicans get four extra senators and they get a 40 seat majority in the House or something. That's apocalyptic enough for me. Oh, that's a guaranteed. I'll get, look, if these candidates stay as they are, no matter how, what order they finish in, Trump will landslide the bejesus out of Joe Biden. I mean, he'll landslide him so hard. All the swing states are gone, Minnesota's gone, 
anywhere, anything near a swing state is gone. How are those senators not gonna be pressuring for him to be replaced? They have no chance. They have no chance, they, but that's exactly what I was gonna get to. Governorships. John. Forget RFK Jr., forget everything else. Are you kidding me? We're gonna, the Republicans will have the Senate, the House, and the White House. And they might have enough senators, and you know what cowards Democrats are. They might be able to bully them past the filibuster on some things. They could actually outlaw abortion nationwide. No, because Trump only wants it to go to the states. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So when <laughs> Biden is going to get landslided so hard that, we, that, the, that they could have a near supermajority in the Senate. This thing is apocalyptic. So only mental institution escapees. If they haven't headed to the border, are on the camp of keeping Biden as a Democratic candidate. If you enjoyed this video, that's because of our members. They make us independent, they make us strong, and they make us honest. Become a member today by hitting the join button below.